Another big, big, big mix technique that you just won't find on YouTube. Next on Music Surgery with me, Dr. Bob. Hey you guys, quickly before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. And don't forget to check out the Doctor's Lounge, my store, and the links to some great samples below in the description of this video. This week we're going to address the biggest mistake that no one ever talks about. If you get this one right, your mixes are going to translate in a way that they never have before. This has probably been the biggest key to my success in the music business. Watch this. All right, you guys, this is a bit of a continuation from last week. If you didn't see last week, I'll put it here, I'll, um, the thumbnail to it. But a quick recap um, is I was trying to find a way for the vocal to come forward more, and the problem is that it was clashing with the snare. And a lot of people said, I got a lot of great comments, that said, um, well, why don't you brighten up the vocal and that would make it work with the snare, which is normally a great idea. And I respect everybody's opinion and, uh, and thanks for um, commenting. And a lot of times that's what you would do. But uh, a lot of things in my channel are about techniques or whatever. We're mixing and producing is really kind of like solving a puzzle. A jigsaw puzzle I got to get all these parts to work and sound great and we have a lot of techniques to do that but there's another layer here that I really want to talk about that's even more important but let me play this first week and you'll hear the snare and the vocal fighting each other here we go I'm gonna start a little earlier in the verse before the snare comes in Cause time moves slow but it still gets old Toxins, but never feel the high. You're all I want, but don't know why. Why, why, why. Don't you let me down again? Some stores are better left closed. Don't you let me down again? Carry the pain wherever I go. Okay, now let me play the chorus, and this is the snare we ended up with, instead of that snare, which is much brighter. This one kind of sits under the vocal and brings the vocal out. You let me down again. But let me go back to the snare we have here, where many people said, well, why don't you just brighten the vocal up because this snare is brighter. Don't you let me down. Now this vocal EQ is, I've never done this before and probably never will again. It's very strange, but let me put an EQ in and brighten this up um, like some of you suggested. Let me roll some, just quickly, roll some bottom off here. And let me brighten this up. Here. Don't you let me down again. Some stores are better left closed. Don't you let me down again. Carry the pain wherever I go. I wear your words. Okay, so I've added top in. It's louder now. Let me turn it down. Don't you let me down again. Some stores are better left closed. Don't you let me down again. Okay. So we've gotten the vocal brighter, but this is the main point I want to get to here. And 
it's mixing the song from an emotional standpoint, not from a technical standpoint. When I add brightness to this, don't you let me down again. Don't you let me down. The vocal is clearer, but I'm adding brightness that adds an emotion of brightness, and brightness we perceive as happiness. And the emotion of this song is not that at all. This is very melancholy. So, the reason I've got this kind of EQ on here is I don't want a happy, bright vocal. Now, bright may have helped the vocal pop over this bright snare, which has a lot of top to it, but I'm not going to carve the vocal to the rest of the song because the vocal is the most important thing. And tied to that is the emotion of the writer and the singer. And I know what the, the emotion of this song, I know the emotion that is intended because I'm a co-writer on the song. So in thinking about the intention of the lyric, don't you let me down again. He's been let down. This is bad. This is not good news. Down again. Down again. Down again. Hear how the emotion is changing. Down again, down again. If I just bypass that strange EQ I've done, listen to how the emotion of what he says, same word, same, I'm not, not playing any other vocal. Down again, don't you let me down again. Now let me play it again. Don't you let me down. With that brightness, it almost sounds like he's smiling. Listen again. Without it. Don't you let me down. Now, with it. Don't you let me down. Don't you let me down. Don't you let me. That sounds darker, more coming from the inside. Uh, gray, cloudy, hurtful. Now, listen to this. Don't you let me down. Don't you let me. Don't you let me down. That's brighter. It sounds like a smile. And, and, and I'm not add, even adding any EQ. That's just dry. Now, if I add this EQ. Don't you let me down. Don't you let me down. It's amazing how the emotion changes. And we always, always want to mix the emotion of the song. Talk to the artist. Find out their intention of what they're trying to say. What the lyric is saying. What the chords are saying. What the melody is saying. What the mood is saying. Find that out first and then complete the jigsaw puzzle. Um, because you could be com completing a nice, bright jigsaw puzzle that sounds great, but you've missed the intent of the emotion of the song. So that's why this vocal has such a strange EQ curve with no brightness. Try to stop everything you're doing when you start a song, talk to the artist, listen to the lyric, and find out what that palette of color, that palette of emotion should sound like before you do any sculpting. And that's going to affect what you do. If I would have not 
mix the emotion of this song, I would have probably made the vocal brighter, the snare brighter, everything a little bit brighter. And this is something I've learned throughout the years, working with so many songs, so many singers. I've gotten it wrong so many times. Um, listen to the lyric, talk to the singer, talk to the writers, and mix for the emotion, not just the clarity, not what you think other mixers are going to think sounds great. It's our job as a service industry to serve the artist and that song and that emotion. If you do this, people are going to flock to you because you're mixing their intention. Well, there you go. Listen to the melody and the lyrics. Talk with the artist and find out the intention of the song you're working on. It's much deeper than cool production and mix techniques and the latest, greatest plugin. Always produce and mix the emotion of the song the writers wrote and the singers sing. That's the key to the song's success and yours. Thanks as always for watching. Give me some comment love and a thumbs up below and hit me at drbobmusicsurgery at gmail.com if you want to say hello or you want me to work on your music. Take care of yourselves and each other and I'll see you the next time the doctor's in.